Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Real Bias Podcast, episode number nine. Actually, ooh, ooh, that's exciting. We're Get going there, places. milestone time. Heck yeah! All right, today uh, we have Heebie Jeebies and Icy Cruzy with us to discuss gaming news. Uh, Heebie, what's up, dude? Oh, not much. It's a bit of a hot day in Texas, but other than that, pretty good. Okay. How are you? Good, good. I'm good. I'm good. Where can we uh where can we find you online? What are you what are you internet famous for? Oh, I'm internet famous for almost anything. <laughs> anything you want me to do. But you can find me on twitch.tv slash heebiejeebies. That's H E B B I E J E V B I E S. And same for my Twitter Twitter handle. Handle. Okay. Cool. And Icy Cruzy. Good to see Hi. you, dude. Good Hi. to see you, too. What, uh, where can we find you online, my dude? Uh, you can find me online at uh, Twitch IC, uh, forward slash IC Cruzy. Um, C, uh, sorry, I-C-Y, C-R-U-Z-Z-Y. Uh, my uh, Twitter is the average IC, and actually brand new on Uplay, uh, crab underscore with a knife. <laughs> <laughs> I've been playing a lot of Siege with my friends lately, so we all <laughs> changed our names. So, yeah, that's pretty new for me. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. Cool, dude. And of course, James, Real Bias Gaming, that's twitch.tv slash Real Bias Gaming, twitter.com slash Real Bias, and youtube.com slash Real Bias Gaming. That's where you can find uh, all kinds of YouTube videos, gaming news, content, and of course, podcasts, which is what we are here today to do. So, let's talk a little bit about our uh, gaming lives here. Um, if you could start us off, Hebe, what have you been streaming this past week? What have you been playing this past week? I have been playing a little bit of Dark Souls 3, trying to psych myself up for my challenge run of the fist only. I still don't know if I want to stream that or not, because it's going to be absolute torture. Wow, fist only. But oh, boy. To, God bless you, kinda... God bless you. <laughs> Thank you. But to come away from that, to kind of chill me out from that, I've also been streaming a lot of Stardew Valley, which is... Very relaxing, and it's it's helping keep balance in my life. <laughs> I actually I have a question it. for you about Dark Souls that. And Stardew Valley. For sure, for Stardew Valley, I'm like me and my girlfriend are trying to like get into games together. For Stardew Valley, would you like? Was that like a good? Would you say that would be a good uh, beginner game for somebody? Oh, absolutely. I okay. mean, if you, it, like if if it's the first game you're gonna play, it's probably not the first, easy. but like. It's been a while, so. Oops. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 easy to get back into. Like, to, like if you haven't played video games in a while, it's, it's very easy to play. It's very easy to have fun and lose a lot of time in that game. All right, cool. All right, all right. I'm not a fan of Stardew Valley. I have some pretty biased opinions, but every once yeah. in a while, I'm, like, watch, like, a friend stream it, but... A friend like Heebie Jeebie. I, right. I, it's, it's tough <laughs> because... It's tough because I do love... The uh, I love the art style. I actually adore the world, not the characters. Actually, I, I pretty much just hate the characters, but I <laughs> I love that world because <laughs> it's like it's like a more pulled back like version of playing like Pokemon, but in a world that like feels like lived in. Right? They're actually oh yeah, you live in it. And they're actual people to live in it. And that's that's so cool. Um, and I, yeah, I do love that that art style. Um, I've heard there's a couple of games coming out like that. Have you ever heard of Re- uh, Reketeer? No, actually. Oh, yeah, that's... And there's a new... Oh, I, dang it, what was it called? I had it on... Did I put it on my Steam Wishlist? I'm going to have to find it. Um, the... It's a, basically a game where you, like, manage a store, and you sell gear to, like, dungeon runners. So basically, like, you manage, like, you're... You play as, like, an NPC in, like, a Dungeons & Dragons campaign basically right that like wow. sells that sells the adventure stuff yeah it's interesting it's like that. I'm, a, I'm a big fan of those those boring quote-unquote video games where it's like do your chores and it's like <laughs> this is really fun <laughs> and you like that as, as my walls are falling down yes. <laughs> the one where you, you like you clean like the um like after a fight or something in a video game like a doom style you're like the cleaner dude that goes oh and, this yeah this or yeah that one that's, like, oh my god. Is it, is it this? Yeah, Moonlighter. I knew I put it on my wish list. Ooh, check out, yeah. check out yeah. Moonlighter on Steam. I have seen that. That that one. I am gonna get. I'm gonna get that tomorrow probably. probably. Yeah. And it's made by. Wait. It's okay. Now I need to do it. My go all the way here. It's made by Eleven Bit Studios, <laughs> who just finished making Frostpunk. Yes, that's 
That's oh, it. Okay. Yeah. They so they made Frostpunk and then they published this uh, Moonlighters. Um that is on my wish list, and it looks very interesting. It, Moonlighters actually has like combat as well as like I, I, don't, I don't know. It's yeah, it's like a it's like a nice mix of like Enter the Gungeon style roguelike or like uh, Binding of Isaac roguelike. Yeah, and then the art style looks pretty like like eight bit Frostpunk. Yeah, but it's got this like city like what's uh, that game called? It, it's got kind of parts where you like go into stores and you talk to people and and you buy and sell stuff too. So. Um. Yeah, it looks yeah, that's moon. That's moonlight. It's like it's definitely off base for like games that I play in general, or certainly games that I stream. But yeah, there you go. Anyways, all right, Cruz, let's transition into what you've been playing Ooh, slash streaming this past week, dude. Do you? Oh wait, really quick, Hebe, what are uh, what are your hours for the stream, and then I'll ask that to Cruz. Uh, I try to. I try, I'm trying to keep to my schedule, which at this point is seven days a week, which I really need to stop doing. But I try to start streaming on the weekdays at about six o'clock, six, six thirty, And then on the weekends, I try to stream around two or three o'clock. Give us a time zone. Nobody actually watches Switch local. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Central standard time. Mm. Oh, yes. Yes. Now, Cruz, have you, have you been streaming or have you just been playing? Uh, games? no, I have not. Like I keep telling myself that I'm going to start streaming, but I'm, uh, my computer isn't, like, the greatest. Like, it's good enough to run the games. Sure. But uh, the one time... I tried streaming Fortnite, like, not too long ago. Maybe, like... I was probably, like, a month ago now. And, like, I could definitely, like, feel it in the game. Yeah. Like, the frame drop and everything. Oh, I just yeah. needed to get myself a new processor at this point. But um, I keep telling myself, like, that's my benchmark. As soon as I get my second processor... Or my new processor, um, I should be streaming more consistently. Okay. Okay. But, oh yeah. my gosh! Why is that popping up over there? Okay, we'll have to f- fix that. Uh, the guys at the bottom are way quieter than the guy at the top. Oh, really? All right. Thanks, Lex Trio. Appreciate it. Let's crank him up here. Yeah, you crank me up. <laughs> uh, but for games that I am playing currently, recently. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that was that was my follow-up question. Thank you. <laughs> I think, um, I've been playing a lot of State of K two. That game is phenomenal. Uh, I really enjoy that one, at James. Um, and then Overwatch, I've been playing a lot of Overwatch. They just had their anniversary, or not their anniversary, or some, I forgot what it was called. And it's pretty much brought all the old skins back. So I bought like a bunch of loot crates and got like, I made McCree, so I got um, a lot of his uh, really cool skins. And then a lot of Rainbow Six Siege as well. And that's kind of been, like, my main three as of late. I took a break from uh, Fortnite and trying to kind of lean away from it. It just got kind of got boring for me. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. Um, let's see here. Oh, yeah, that was that was it. <laughs> this is so weird. I'm like, usually I go into, like, oh, let's dig into our, our gaming history here, our gaming past. But um, I guess we'll just go on to me and then jump into some of the news articles of the day. So uh, this week I've actually been streaming Darkest Dungeon as well as Total War Warhammer. And I have to say, Total War Warhammer has made me very, very happy um, coming back to it uh, after five months. I completely burnt out. I was so frustrated and uh, just took a break and played a whole bunch of single-player games. And and here I am back playing Total War Warhammer, and it feels really good with the new Norska patch. Uh, Tons of stuff has been fixed. Uh, and that's been a lot of fun. Uh, also, Darkest Dungeon getting ready for DLC coming out next month. Hype. Yep. Very much so. I'm actually doing a Radiant one run. My goal is to actually um, beat the game. I've never beat it. I've only <laughs> gotten to the Darkest Dungeon like twice and then basically just got burnt out or bored of playing. <laughs> I didn't know there was an actual ending to that game. I thought it was just like a bunch of... Well, yeah, no, you, oh. kill, you kill Cthulhu or something. Cthulhu. Yeah, the the entire game is one long intro scene, and then you do the darkest dungeon. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Um, but also this week, I've actually been playing an interesting game, and maybe we'll get into a little bit of discussion here, called Escape from Tarkov. Uh, now, I, are either of you familiar with that game? Have we talked about yeah. Escape from Tarkov? I've, I've, uh, I've, we've talked about it a little bit, and I've seen you play a little bit of it. Okay. But other than that, that's... Oh, that's cool. right, that's right, that one day I did stream it. Yeah. I haven't mm-hmm. talked to you about it, but I've definitely, I remember watching a lot of stuff, like waiting for it to come out. And like, as soon as I saw it come out, I'm like, I'm never going to be able to play this on my computer. <laughs> so yeah, the, the optimized, I mean, it's still in beta, right? So it's just like stars. And it's like, well, only like the elite, 
the upper mm-hmm. class of PC gamers can play it right now because it's so poorly optimized. Right. <laughs> it feels bad. Um, and so, oh, jeez. I'm, I'm getting distracted by chat. I shouldn't do that. You really think that's, uh, it's distracting? Okay. We'll do that then. Uh, move to bottom. There we go. Okay. And the thing about, I, last night I literally stayed up until 4 a.m. playing it. I think I probably played the game for like 10 plus hours yesterday. It was ridiculous. Like, I didn't have to go into work. Like, they actually called me. They were like, hey, you don't need to, you don't need to um, come in today. I was like, oh. Awesome. <laughs> <It> just, <laughs> those are those are the best. Yeah, yeah. Just sat there and played Escape from Target. They, I don't know. There's something about the the progression feels so natural. You know, like it's you're gaining levels. You know, like you're playing an MMO, um, but you just you feel the progression of your loot. You know, starting with like a whole bunch of crappy gear and then like unlocking access to new gear or getting out of a raid where you stole somebody else's really nice gear and you survived. It's like it feels so good all the time. Gunplay feels great as long as the server isn't lagging or crashing or anything like that. Um, and so that's it's been a lot of fun, a lot of fun playing it. Yeah, it's been great. Um, so yeah, so that's that's been my off stream game and it's been taking away all my time from playing. <laughs> finishing god of war <laughs> which i should be my brother just out. finished that so oh, yeah 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 it's 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 very good it's very good i i i streamed it for two days and uh, i was thinking about continuing streaming it but i looked online at how much longer i had left in the game and uh, i realized i was i was on chapter i was on chapter like five or six of what was it like 17 chapters and i was like okay, I'm not streaming this for, like, eight more stream days. Like, oh, jeez, just to beat it. Like, this is going to be ridiculous. Right. So there's, there's a ton of gameplay left that I still have to get through. That, so. and and it's just it's just a hard game yeah. to be commentating over. It, like, like, there's just so every... You look left, and they say something. You look right, and they say something. You walk ten feet, and they say something. Yeah. It's like, I don't want to talk over them. Yeah, well, and, and interesting stuff, right? You want to hear all the interactions between, between boy... And God of War. Boy. Boy. Yeah, exactly. To me. You're not ready, boy. No. Good game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, I will get to that eventually. I'm sure that at some point this summer I'll beat it, but just right now just letting it letting it ride with uh, Escape from Tarkov. All right, so moving on to gaming news. Uh, I have a couple topics that we'll discuss today, uh, and we feel free to rabbit trail, feel free to argue feel free to devil's advocate and uh here we go so game mobile gaming monetization trends that are working a recent games industry dot biz article uh cited and actually and this is we're not going to talk about you know the gaming industry and how how best to make money and what sort of profits you need to be maximizing in quarter two uh but i do i from a gamer's perspective th- this really caught my eye this was really interesting as somebody who Personally, I'm I'm boycotting EA games right now for 2018. Quick, I'm not buying a single quick, EA uh, Yeah. I, we're getting this message saying oh. uh, meeting time, and it's counting down. Oh, no. Oh, so, really? I, I'm so sorry. I didn't want to cut you off, but like I think we're going to get kicked oh, off the video. Oh, we get kicked off. Interesting. We might have to start a recall, but or, I mean, we can still hear each other fine, but just like join in again. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, no, I'll, I'll take care of it. I'll take care of it. Sorry. No, that's, that's, uh, this is why we're doing this test stream. Upgrade to Pro Kappa. Yeah, well, there you go. Eh, business expense. No. Big deal. no. <laughs> I, I just didn't expect that. There you go. But that, that's why, we're, that's why we're testing it out. It's no big deal. Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks for that. It's up. I was no just going to go barreling forward. Um, anyway. But, uh, yeah, so the, there's an interesting new trend in app games um, when it comes to microtransactions, you know, something that really frustrates me and uh, something that, that has actually caused me to, like, choose to not spend money on certain companies and choose to actively encourage other people to not spend money on certain companies, certain games. Um, actually, there's been a new uh, side note. Have you guys heard of the new Harry Potter mobile game? Oh, it's, yes. It's I like did. Pokemon Go, right? Kind of? Eh. Kind of. But, like, it's yeah, it's like... basically, it's a it's a meme now um oh. it's it's a huge yeah. meme basically now about how in like the first 20 minutes of the game you um you run out of like 
energy crystals or whatever you have to spend, you know, to that are it's like action points, right? And you can spend money to get more. But the uh <laughs> but then you you run into like a situation where one student is like getting like choked to death by um <laughs> What's the what's the there's the weeds the the like roots that try the whomping willow what Groot right is it the whomping willow no not no 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 in in the first it's one of the traps in the first book dang it why can't I think about what it is um anyway yeah so Groot's choking somebody out right now yeah sure well it's just a tree root but yeah yeah and you like and then it pops up like you can't save this person unless you spend energy crystals and then you have to like buy money it's like okay wow that's so stupid (laughs) sorry kid what you're dead I'm not yeah. it's a little more insidious than that. It's like it's like you're playing this game and it's your character. It's your character creator that you made, and then um, you get in this trap, and it's like, oh no, you're gonna die, but you're out of energy, and you could wait 24 hours and get more energy and, and just progress the story. But then you're staring at your char- like you're not staring, but you're you've got your character there in life or death situation for 24 hours, and it's it's kind of like it's kind of like it's tugging on the heartstrings of children. Almost, it's like putting you in a perilous situation, and then right. it's it's predatory. Hey, give it's me give, predatory. give me a dollar. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's predatory microtransactions. It's, it's like the quintessential problem. And I'm going to try and have this discussion here while I pay for Zoom Pro. Lol. Oh no! But, uh, the ultimate predatory. <laughs> yeah, there we go. They got me. Devil snare. Yes. Thank you, Lex. True. Yeah, dude. Uh, I don't know if you guys like watch watch South Park at all, but they did a really funny, like, commentary on, like, the whole mobile game scene and how, like, it was just like, oh, just spend a couple of bucks and you can get yourself more coins, and then most of the characters are just like, what, why would you do that? That's so dumb. And then you have, like, that one guy that's just like, I'm gonna put all of my money into this game, (laughs) and, uh... I definitely, like, saw that a lot when I was in high school for, like, oh, what was that game? Clash of Clans. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There was, exactly. we had a, uh, we had a, um, a guild at our school, right? Oh, cool. We, we've been upgraded. And, uh, um, there was this, uh, this one kid, he was a foreign exchange student, and he spent well over $1,000 on that game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Granted, he was top 500. Hey. But he kept spending money on yeah, this yeah. game. Yeah, no, just, I've seen, oh actually, God. it's it's really popular, like, streamers, um, it's become a really popular thing, like, when a new Hearthstone expansion comes out, you know, you want to you go see the streamer that's opening 1,000 packs in a row, right? Or, like, it's become really big to, like, see, like, Ooh. streamers who, part of their, like, bit with the game is, like, we're going to spend, we're going to see how far $1,000 gets us in this game. Right, and then and like test it out. Um, and sometimes people just give it to them. You know, the 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 developer will be like, "Oh, here's you know one thousand dollars worth of credit, and you can try it out and show people." You know, or because it's it can be good marketing. Um, but sometimes they'll just pay it, or somebody like donates or whatever. And yeah, they'll <laughs> how, how nutty is that? It's like, but yeah, people. It, it's what's ridiculous. I think is how how accepting society is when like hardcore gamer society is really like resistant to this, but like society actually like doesn't hate that. Like you said, like random people in some game that they really enjoy people that aren't necessarily huge gamers all the time, but yeah, they'll just like drop, you know, a hundred dollars a month you know, on, on some mobile app that they really like. Ridiculous. Um, it, an interesting life choice. An interesting life choice. I'm not going to say you can't you can't have fun that way. Um, that, I, that's certainly it's just ex- an expensive way to have fun. That's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And props to people who can do it. I I know personally, me, I can't. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I stumbled upon across this interesting, very interesting um, new method that that some of the new apps are are trying to uh, sell here. And they're actually, what they're doing is they're setting up a system in their game so that you can choose to watch ads. What? Oh. <laughs> that was my was brother, like, sorry. Oh, okay, I was like, did, did somebody break your window? Are they, are they sneaking? I'm getting, I'm actually getting swatted right <laughs> now, sorry. No, he's, <laughs> someone just like starts pulling him out the window. I'm just, fine, just keep going. 
Yeah. Um, anyway, but, as you're saying. Yeah, just the uh, that you can you can choose to watch ads. Now, there's nothing more frustrating than, than working on an app on your on your phone, and then an ad just like pops up without you wanting to see it. But I thought that was really really interesting. It's like you can either pay money. But or you can basically for free access all the content you want. You just choose to watch a couple ads instead of instead of paying money. So I'm wondering, kind of like as as users yourself, like what do you guys think about that? Well, from I, I don't personally, I actually love those kinds of ads because I get to go. Oh, I need more mana crystals or whatever, the hell. and I'll go and I'll hit the ad and I'll put my phone down and I'll go do something for thirty seconds and then I'll come back and hey, I've got more money now. Uh, but like the either way the the app developers getting their money they're either getting your money or they're getting your impressions on an ad which will get them money yeah it's, um, it's it's certainly a way for them to make money right like that's the it, it definitely makes them money right it's just it it i'm wondering if it feels better right as a gamer if it feels it better to have that happen instead of like things popping up all the time, like oh, you need to pay ninety nine cents or feels better. whatever. It does definitely feel better. I definitely appreciate those a lot more, but I don't think they're nearly as impactful because, like, when I when I'm playing a game on my phone and an ad pops up and I go, mm, ad. <laughs> and, like I'm gonna I'm gonna remember that ad because it made me angry, which I think is better <laughs> than me going watch an ad and then put my phone down and never actually see the ad. Right, right. So I don't know. Um, for me, I actually kind of experienced this the other day. I downloaded, I, mean, I was talking to my girlfriend about mobile games that we used to play, and we were talking about Cut the Rope, that came up, and so I re-downloaded it to see what they did to it, and they added, like, a bunch of new stuff to it, but they also added this thing where, like, it was so annoying, because you'd be playing a level, and you'd mess up, right, and you have to restart. But sometimes, on the restart, you would have to watch an ad for it. And that just got so aggravating because it, some, it felt random sometimes. Like sometimes I could try it 10 different times and then I wouldn't get an ad. Or sometimes I'd try it like one after the other. Every time I restarted, I'd get an ad. And so yeah. what I ended up actually doing was every time I play the game, I ended up deleting it. But every time I played the game, I would just put my phone in airplane mode so I wouldn't have to go through all the ads. Oh, Get them. <laughs> so I, I was just so upset because they're like, oh, you can pay to get rid of ads. I'm like, no, I just won't receive any texts or anything and just play my game. Like, it was just, it was annoying. And so it's, I think it's a strong marketing technique, but I feel like they also get more money for viewing the ads than they actually do for people paying not to see them. Like, they want people to watch these ads because they get paid per view versus like the one time payment of like, what, a buck 99? Well, you never I see ads. Yeah, they both have upside, right? Because the upside is that once somebody spends a buck ninety nine and sees how effective that is, then you know they uh, they look at their uh, their bank statement the next month and realize they spent a thousand dollars on it, right? And that's that's pretty much upside for the company. You gotta love that um, because and that's the thing is like is it's it's so hard to place the anger in the right spot, right? Because a lot of times when you look at your bank statement like that, at least personally, right, like it's it's really easy to self-deprecate when you see something like that. You're like, dang it, okay, like, I, you know, you put the you put the onus on yourself. I need to be more responsible. I need to budget how much money I'm spending, right? You don't you don't always jump right to, that darn company stole all that money. It's like, no, you, you hit, you know, you entered your credit card information, you hit, yes, I definitely want to spend this money, like. That's your fault. Yeah, it's so it's, it's basically all, oh, no, it is, it is your fault, but, it, but it's, it's hard to actually, I mean, and I'm saying society has evidenced this, right? That, you ask you ask anybody who has played like Clash of Kansas or spent hundreds of dollars on mobile games um, that <laughs> that you ask them several years later when they're not playing that game anymore. It's like, do you regret spending you know that much money on that game? It's like, yeah, I respect I regret spending sixty dollars on No Man's Sky, but like, <laughs> dear God, do I regret spending like you know five hundred dollars on Hearthstone when it, when it was in beta? Right, like it's huge difference. I'm, I really haven't spent any money on Hearthstone since, or like barely played it. But mm. yeah, that was like the you know like the fifty dollars card packs that you're telling me about. Yeah, yeah, don't spend those, huh? Yeah, no, no. I was actually I was looking at it the other day again too, and yeah, actually every every card pack is more than a dollar. That that surprised me so much. I'm like, Blizzard card packs should be like fifty cents. Well, okay, whatever. That's that's a whole different topic. But that's interesting. That's interesting. Um, I don't I don't know if I'd necessarily say that because I've spent money in these games like Clash of Clans and whatnot before, 
I, I don't know if I'd necessarily say that I regret them, because I see it a little bit differently. Because what I'm thinking is I'm thinking I'm, I'm relating it to specifically Magic Gathering with card packs. Mm -hmm. And I definitely don't... I spent thousands of dollars on Magic Oh, Gathering. yeah, same. I don't really regret any of that, because I had a lot of fun doing yeah. that. So, I mean, I, I feel like if, if you're getting... Uh, and a, a decent amount of fun out of the twenty, thirty, forty, fifty dollars you're putting in a video game, even though it's free to play, is if it's worth it to you, you know, it's worth it to me. I think that was like my whole like it's kind of might be a little bit off topic, but I was like my whole deal with League of Legends was I when it for, uh, when I was in transitioning to high school and then while I was in high school, I, I spent a lot of money on that game because uh, just for skins and stuff like that because I didn't play anything else. And I, cause I had a really crappy laptop that could play League of Legends, and so that's right, why I spent yeah. my money. My, I yeah. spent my money on League of Legends, and I kept having fun with it. And my friend um, has this mentality of like, for every dollar that he pays, he wants to get like an hour of entertainment. So when he spends like a twenty dollar, if he buys like a twenty dollar game on Steam that's on sale, then he expects to have twenty hours of hour of like fun content to play mm -hmm. through. And I don't think that. That might be like the best way to look at it, but it I understand because there's also like these free games like they have my friend has a thousand hours and unturned and he hasn't paid a cent for it. Like I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, no, that's yeah, it certainly and we'll actually we're gonna talk about that next, actually, the value of an hour of gameplay. Um and what, what that's worth to people. Is there some like greater truth out there or is it is it purely purely just subjective and all over the place but uh yeah i i do think uh, i mean i think it's pretty fair to say that uh, i would happily point to riot games as like the the great shining example of microtransactions um and and yeah watching ea or some stupid app game that i buy you know and watch how they monetize their game sometimes makes me want to throw up it makes me so angry whereas riot games is like no you literally play the game for free and you you have you you can you have access to all the fun that you can possibly have in that game for free, right? Well, also, Not so functionality, they, they, but all the fun is right there. Yeah, they they also have the rotating champion. Yeah, yeah, no, like that's every, what I'm saying. Like you have access, so, like like you literally have access yeah. to everything, everything. You can become it, a pro at the game and never spend a cent on it. It's it's amazing that they've kind of created like a, like them and then Overwatch way way later created really good ways of doing loot boxes. And, and microtransactions in general, but then the rest of the like game developer community just kind of said, "No, we're going to make boxes, though. <laughs> we're we want in box. on this, but we're going to do it a little differently." <laughs> it's like the uh, copy my homework thing meme, but like, yeah, it's it's when like, you and then EA took it and ran. Yeah, when you put yeah. items in the game that specifically make you better because you put more money into it, that's when. That's when it should be like irritating and bad and right, right, yeah, yeah, no, and it's it ultimately comes down to and I'll, I'll kind of close with this and we'll move on. Um, but it it comes down to looking at a company and you can understand their heart from their actions, right? Same with people, and I I, I don't want to understate this because I think this is really really important when you're thinking about what kind of games to buy. Um, is that that the actions of a company display the heart, display their their intentions, display their goals, display what they want to accomplish in this world. And, and Riot Games just wants people to play their game. <laughs> like, they just want people to have fun playing their game, and they let everybody do that. And and the same with, um, like, and that was, that's always been, they still say this, actually, about the LCS, the, their esports scene, is that it's like, that's not the moneymaker. It's it's not there for people to like spend you know thousands of dollars on tickets to get in or like you know like blockbuster uh, rights to to be able to um, advertise you know on the LCS. What they what they want is for people to enjoy the sport and enjoy their game, and that's so awesome. And then, and and you can tell when other companies that is that is not what they want to see. They want they want to get paid. A ton of, but they want to cash in on this on this game biz, you know, this industry craze. Um, yeah, so there we go. So moving on, um, paradox. 
Let's talk about Paradox a little bit. Now, Par- Paradox is probably the absolute good guy, like, shining paragon of publishers and developers right now. So in love with them. They, pr- they, pu- uh, they produced, no, they published um, Battletech. Very happy about that. Also, I believe they published Northgard as well, which is another, like, smaller uh, RTS. So they're reaching out to, like, indie devs and, um, and publishing their games. And, you know, helping them along to finish their games. They, they produce some of the best strategy games in the world out there. And uh, they, they actually uh, said in a recent uh, interview, actually, the, one, of the, one of the executives at the company, he said, if a game can't be played for 500 hours, we probably shouldn't be publishing it. Right? And that's publishing, not just developing, right? Like, they're, they're going out finding studios that are making games that, sh- that, that are iterative and that take a long time to play. I mean, like Battletech, uh, I, I don't have a 500 hours of Battletech, but I could totally see myself like, yeah, I, I could see a situation where I wasn't, you know, completely done with that game at like the 80 or 90. Well, how, much, how many hours do I have in, in Battletech? Let me double check here. Uh, where are you? 499. Yeah, <laughs> we're almost there. <laughs> yeah, 72 hours. Okay, so the 72 hours, I felt like I still had a lot of um, a lot of things that I could accomplish, you know, in that game. Like I could definitely do another run through, you know, and that could put but, me up close to two hundred hours. So did you? Did you beat it? Yeah. Like, you okay, so, but like, there was, was there new content content in there? Like maybe like something that you could upgrade for a character, like a different like mm-hmm. way to upgrade them, like a different way. So like, if we're talking paths of exile, like you know how they like the skill tree, like different branches. There's this freaking crazy, and you can go like several different ways. Do yeah. you feel like you have that with that game? Yes, and actually what, what's interesting, and I've made this comparison a, a thousand times between Battletech and Pokemon, actually. There's this element of, like, stumbling across a new Pokemon and, like, wanting to catch it. You know, and, like, I, I'm, it's probably not going to be on my six-man team, but I want to catch that Pokemon. Um, like, I've never seen that, like, you know, and, and, and it's like, what the heck, where'd that come from? Um, and it has that element in, now there aren't, you know, 150 to 53... Um, at Battle Max, there are, there's like, there's like 60, I think, or no, 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 sorry, there's, there's like 40, and then most of them have one, if not two, variants on the different types of weapons you can put on them, and so there was certainly this element of like, man, I want to, I want to test out, I, I want to, I want to start the game again and see what mechs I get early, right, because depending on what mech you, mechs you get, Early, that you know, you pick a different one that you have to rely on. Like my, that run through, I really relied on these two mechs to carry me. Right, they were the the cornerstones of my team. But like the next time you go through, you might not get those mechs. Um, you might not stumble across them in that run through, and so then you need to build your team a different way. Um, and so yeah, definitely, BattleTech is I, I would say in in that realm. Um, but. Uh, I mean, one clarifying thing is it says if a game can't be played for 500 hours. He's not saying our games one are a failure. Our games are a failure if people aren't playing them for 500 hours. Right? That's, right. that's not what's being said. It's, you know, if there's enough content and different things in the game to do to be able to warrant those long play. I mean, certainly Crusader Kings, uh, you know, Hearts of Iron. I mean, the, the classic Paradox games are you can play them for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours. There's no doubt about that. Um, but my question to you two, you two is actually, you know, at what point are you really happy with how many hours a game takes to complete? I mean, Cruz, you already kind of said, you know, you had a buddy who who said about a dollar an hour. That's an interesting formula. Do you do you ascribe to that specifically or? No, okay. no, I, I don't personally, because uh, recently I forgot to mention I played through Uncharted 4 and The Last of Us, both games on my PlayStation Oh, Phenomenal right, games. Unch- by... Four is uh, Thief's End, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. The Thief's End. Sorry, <laughs> yeah. it's on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> but I did. I didn't pay for those, but they were like sixty dollars when I think Ron brought my brother The Last of Us, and then also um, Uncharted. But he paid sixty dollars for them, and <clears throat> playing through both of those games, I sat down. For like three good days and probably took me 10 hours to complete both campaigns and i played them on hard too uh, 10 I, hours each yeah okay. probably okay not like but five I, hours each a total of 10 hours but like yeah, no no okay. no sorry five hours each yeah you're correct okay i definitely feel 
like I if I would have paid the sixty dollars, I would I'd be satisfied, and I'd want to like even play through. I'm thinking about playing through the Last of Us again on the hardest difficulty, Survivor, and suffering through that again, and uh, just because <laughs> the story's phenomenal, and the gameplay is amazing, and it just everything you do like adds up. I I feel like as long as you're enjoying the game, right? Yeah. Why does it matter for if I shouldn't say that? I don't know. You be take over if you can because I need to think about what I'm gonna say. <laughs> yeah, I'll just jump off of what you were saying there, which is because um, I I had a very similar thought, which I then backtracked in my brain. But it was like, if the game is compelling, if the game is fun to play, if the game, if I'm enjoying the game, and I I don't feel like there were you know unanswered questions at the end of the game, it doesn't so much matter how long that game took, but in that same vein, I would be unsatisfied if I paid $60 for a five-hour game. Um, so there is a line. There is a know, line somewhere. We're just trying to figure out where. What yeah. was that game that and then, released for the PS4? The Order 19-something or other? Oh, 1940-19... Uh, uh, something. I, it was with like old-timey steampunk with werewolves and vampires. Yeah, and was. that um, was like a prime example of like... Oh. I... Everybody was so hyped for it. They paid sixty dollars, like, because they got it with the release of the PlayStation, and then it just was, like five hour. Game. It was a it was a very good movie. <laughs> there you go. It wasn't a sixty dollar movie. It was a very good okay. Movie. Interesting. Yeah. I, so I didn't even hear gets, of that. Okay. It gets to that. I, I think I, I agree with you being what you're saying. So I'm or the order eighteen eighty six. Or that's what it is. Yep. But yeah, so like, because you got to toe the line between making the game feel good to play and satisfying, and Assassin's Creed 1. <laughs> because you don't want too many things that make you go, wow, I don't want to play this game right now. Why am I doing this? Like, I remember when I, I first started playing Assassin's Creed 1, after it came out, I was like, I think we were on like Assassin's Creed 4 or 5, and I was like, I'll start playing it. And I, I remember I killed the first guy. It took me like an hour and a half or two hours to kill the first guy, like to get to that point. Right. And they're like, congratulations, there's 11 more guys, go get them. And I'm like, no. I just put my controller down and I just stopped playing it because I it's it's I I didn't have enough fun yes. in that first few hours to justify do I mean, okay again. to be fair yeah I, I Assassin's Creed one did not age well but when that first came out I was a freshman in college when Assassin's Creed one first came out that I mean that I, was that I was, was in fifth was grade revolutionary. I remember that <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was in fifth grade yeah <laughs> I remember I remember coming home with my PS3. <laughs> That was like, big from time. GameStop and playing it. That was amazing. Uh, and and I understand, like Prince of Persia, you know, did it first. It's not like they invented some brand new way of playing adventure games with like the whole park parkour thing. Like uh, understand that, but like the the open world function was unprecedented. The you know the the climbing was just so satisfying and. You get to be a freaking assassin. I mean, I have always you know the other quintessential like assassin game, right? Is like Hitman, but like. Assassin's Creed. That's very different. Assassin's Creed. Metal Gear Solid is so good. Well, okay, yeah, I guess I guess. I if you don't talk, if you haven't played Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, no, 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 I I concede that point. I do concede that point. The truck have started to move. <laughs> I feel asleep. <laughs> but no, uh, like a prime like good example is that uh, MGS Five Phantom Pain. I there were so many little things to do in that game. Like you can go around to random bases and capture dudes and. Right. Do tiny, Upgrade tiny, your, tiny little things. Your, uh, your base and whatnot, and like, and like with with each one of those things, I had a, a, it like so much fun. It was so good. It was relaxing, exciting, all that. It was great. And the the contrast of that is when I think of bad Ubisoft games that are they just salt the earth with collectibles that I yes. could not care less yes. about. Yes. And it's like, yeah, there's like forty hours of gameplay there, but. One of those hours is you running around looking for a paper towel. <laughs> like a flag that's in some obscure area behind somebody who's just standing there 24 7. Yeah, but it's so shiny. It's so shiny. And the animation, the, the little like tinkling sound when you actually get it, it's. it's it's glorious. <laughs> I, I, I it agree. makes me feel good inside. Come on. I agree. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> No. Yeah, I, I see my I do actually have uh, not exactly a formula, I will say, but uh, I, I to me, I think that like a $60 game does need to give about 
oh, like 35 to 40 hours of gameplay. Right, that's that's generally my like. Okay, here's the rule. I start there, and then I can start making exceptions. Right, but I kind of start there. If a game costs sixty bucks, Question. I need to get about thirty five plus hours out of it. Yeah. Question. Uh, so, like, let's say twenty of those hours come from the campaign. The other, how many more you want to play come from the multiplayer? Mm-hmm. Does that qualify for you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. to me, okay. that's uh, Modern Warfare that's like, 2 it's, is like the exactly. quintessential, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, it was what? That's kind of what I was thinking of. Eight-ish hour campaign, and then I spent if you're 60 garbage, hours on multiplayer. Maybe? If you're Yeah, the campaign was okay. It was, it was good. The, I the Modern Warfare 2 campaign was amazing. Campaign. amazing. Amazing. It was good. Amazing. It was good. It was amazing. Good. And then there's Museum. It was good. That added like another it's, half an hour of entertainment. Museum? It's definitely going to be better than Advanced Warfighter or whatever. You don't know Museum? No. Like, after you beat the storyline, you can go to the museum, and it shows, like, characters from... Oh, I thought that was just, like, the end credits scene. No, that's, like, a secret area. You can actually go... Oh. Okay. Uh, alright. Fair. (laughs) Awkward. (laughs) Awkward. I don't know. I I did... I I adored uh, Modern Warfare 2. The story and the multiplayer... So tilting and so much fun. And and the perfect example of what I'm talking about here is that I feel like I it gave me so much value because I probably have, like, well, okay, wait, now I can check. See, there you go. Hey, <coughs> I have a computer what right about, here. What about limited what? collectibles? 141 hours in multiplayer, 10 hours in single player. Okay. Um, so I got, I got, like over double you know what what i kind of expect and that's and i've had so much fun playing that game um because because yeah to me 30 hours of multiplayer and 10 hours of single player is definitely definitely enough to make me happy that i spent 60 dollars um what would you count destiny as multiplayer yeah boy was destiny it, worth the money i would come destiny I... in the garbage <laughs> hey Hey, I put over a thousand hours to Destiny. I'm not happy about well, half of those hours. We, James <laughs> wow. and I put like over. We put well over a hundred into the beta. Just yeah, with, old, the, yep. with the multiplayer. Yeah, the week it was out. The, that's right. I streamed that so much. Yeah, we streamed that a lot. And like, as soon as the main game came out, I was just like, Yeah, I don't know. I want to do what I was doing before. Like this is Destiny Two, mind you. But I, I was just, yeah. I didn't like. I don't know. The Destiny 1 beta, so like, the real quick, but Destiny 1 beta, Destiny 2 beta, Destiny 1 beta was just the first, like, eight levels of the game, the first eight missions. Oh, yeah. And I put, like, probably at least 80 hours into the beta alone, and so when the game came out, I kind of was playing the first part of that game going, oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so I liked the Destiny 2 beta better because it wasn't so much yeah, of that. Yeah. Like, it had, they like, gave one you or one or two raids, the opening mission, and the multiplayer. Right? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, it, but like, it, uh, you know what? I will, I will say this. <laughs> I'll make a point that the point. My point is that I can't figure out my point. That I still can't <laughs> figure out why Destiny Two failed. It, well, and I had to say failed with an asterisk, and I'll talk about that. Or why I just didn't enjoy it. Why I can't get into it uh, anymore. Right? I got to like max level, and then and then kind of just played some multiplayer, and then, and then stopped. I, and I've heard everybody, right? I'm, I'm saying I can't decide from all the opinions I've heard and from me playing it. I can't figure – I can't figure the dang thing out. And here's the thing about it failing is that it didn't fail. It was the second highest money-making game of 2017, right, behind Modern but Warfare. There's so much salt though. Do, no man, right? Sky, no, no. Th- I mean, there's plenty of yeah. Of course, you're you're gonna have people complaining on the internet, and it's so easy to hear them. And that's the thing is, like, you always have the silent silent minority, or the the sorry, the the shouting minority, and uh, you know that are like probably around five percent of your players, right? And the thing is, if that ever doubles, <laughs> then it sounds like everybody hates the game, but it's still only ten percent, you know. And and that's that's I can't I can't figure it out because the game has made tons of money. And actually, this is we'll just transition right here. This is the perfect transition to our final topic of the day. Um, the, it it still is making tons of money, tons of money, and um, with you know it's it's still selling all kinds of its DLC stuff. It made tons of money on on console launch made tons of money on pc launch that's actually honestly that, that's probably why it was the second highest grossing that i think about it it literally had two different launches 
I bought the game twice. Yeah, you had, I did it. It was all me. <laughs> it was only Hebe. He bought all the coffee. It was you and your <laughs> ilk. I've brought this you upon us. You don't want us. to know how much. You don't want to know how much money I spent on Destiny One. <laughs> oh, no. It was well over three hundred dollars. Oh, I mean, that's not terrible when you think about it. I bought the game multiple. And it's like, times. why is that? Like, I don't, and, and you know what? I'm sitting here thinking, like, man, Bungie is just like such a great company, but like, I mean, are they? Activision. Like, I mean, blame Activision. Uh, blame yeah, it. well, I mean, I, I happily, happily, EA and Activision and Ubisoft. I would love for Bungie to be the. Uh, uh, developer Jesus that everyone thinks they are, but at the end of the day, they're just trying yeah. to be funny. And can we too, just, so. you know, I, I've, I watched this TED talk the other day about how, like, the government needs to come in and break up Google, Facebook, Microsoft, and I think Apple as well. I, 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 maybe, I, oh, am I missing one? Was it Comcast too? This is some TED talk about how. Probably Xfinity. Uh, yeah, probably. Um, how, you know, those companies are bigger than the government and, you know, and all this stuff and how, like, if we want to be capitalists, which we, you know, we supposedly say we kind still kind of kinda do, at least partly, um, that, like, we, we need to not have these giant okay. companies that own everybody. We're here to um, talk about video games, not politics. Well, right, so... so Please refrain. So, I, I'm, I'm relating that to, like, okay. man, can we just, can, can we do that with, with the big game publishers? Like, that would be, I, I would, I would appreciate uh, that greatly. <laughs> can we just man, break up the, Activision? The day that... Please? The day that, like, video game publishers start lobbying for the government, I'm going to cry. The, the, I think they This is one of those things that's, like, the right. as a company that's trying to make money, they've made a lot of money. But they want to make well, money. Well, it's, it's not so much that. It's that they, they've accomplished their goal of, like, making their stockholders money. But at the... But they've made gamers sad. <laughs> and they've made a world... But that's the fine. The world a better... A worse place, really, for... For that's, games. That's fine. You can go buy the crying emote and give them more money. It's fine. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's fine. So anyways, we'll, we'll transition here into um, the uh, final news article, news article of the day. Chinese company NetEase invests $100 million in Bungie. Um, their games have actually never been released in China anymore. It, or never been released in China before. And I'll talk about that in a second. Um Bungie's and, games, and this is yeah, Bungie's games, right? And okay, I was gonna say Bungie has not released a game over there, yeah. And or I know, I believe, I believe Destiny games have not been released over there. But um, this is interesting. Like, there's all this optimism, even in the the business world. They're all very, I, I believe the term is bullish on Destiny on on Bungie, um, and and of course Hollywood has been demonstrating, you know, how like flops in movies over here in the U.S they can make all their money when they go over to China because there's like five times the population over there. Um, and, and you get enough people to watch and you can like, you can make back all your money, even if the movie's a, a, a flop at home. And uh, this is interesting because China actually, uh, um, I was doing a little bit of research on this. If, if I'm not mistaken, this, this is correct. Um, is that China, the way they, um, they, they basically run their company, their country, like with part like forced communism on top of capitalism and uh, what that means is the government basically steps in like controls the capitalist system so in this case what what that has mean meant for a long time i don't think it's actually exactly the required requirement anymore but you used to actually have to have a um you a chinese based company sell your stuff right you couldn't go into china and just, like, set up your own brick-and-mortar store, you know, through the government or whatever, and, like, build it and, like, sell your stuff. Like, you actually had to work with a Chinese company to to get into the country um, if you were a business, and it, right? And, that, and that's how China basically, you know, f- in- encouraged growth at home and kept foreign businesses from shoving out all their small businesses um, and all their, their growing industries. Um, and it's, it's still really, it's still, like, there's a lot of restrictions on, on getting in there. Um, and so that's, that's kind of one of the reasons why, like, like some games haven't always been out there and, and why movies haven't always gotten into, into China as well. Um, but because now NetEase is a part owner of Bungie, they get, they have a seat at the table on the board of directors. Now Bungie can easily get in to the Chinese market, right? That's why this is so big. It's not just the investment. It, It actually represents an open door for Bungie to get their games into China. So, um, that, that I found interesting as, you know, former business major. Maybe people don't think that's 
quite as cool as I do. But um, but certainly the the bigger part of this is kind of what we've been talking about. It's like, wh- what <coughs> is it about Bungie that has made everybody, you know, what makes them worth investing $100 million? <laughs> well, I mean, they make money. Uh, yeah, I, I they guess. They do make money. They, they've always found a way to make money. Yes. So. And it... And regardless of what they do, I'm calling it now. They could make Destiny Three could be the worst game on the planet, ever. Everyone hates it. People would not hate Bungie for it. Right? How did they do that? How? Because they they built they up, made Halo exactly. They made Halo. That's exactly it. They built up this reputation with this phenomenal game that they've yeah. made in the past. We're like, guys, look what we can do. Here's shit. <laughs> but look they're what like we've they're done. like a more successful Cliffy B. Whereas Cliffy B made one good game and then nothing yeah. else. Hey, Bungie made a bunch of good games, and then Destiny was good. Destiny Two is I'm I'm still I'm still saying Destiny Two is good. Yeah, I'm still saying yeah. it. it. It's just the problem is you're going from Destiny One Year Three, which has a shit load of content, yeah. right? To Destiny Two Year One, which has yeah. Where's no? My, that's that where okay. It? That I that's I remember it actually. That is that's the one thing that I can think of the one good explanation of why Destiny Two is is so looked down on. Right? Is um the same problem that every single MMO has had since people have tried to compete with World of Warcraft. Since uh, since World of Warcraft came out and, and blew everybody away and will never, ever die, and all these other companies <laughs> tried words. to make MMOs and, uh, you know, and tried to compete with them, and tried to do that since the dawn of time, a.k.a. the dawn of World of Warcraft, um... <laughs> People have been releasing their MMOs without enough content, <sighs> and how do you compete? And that's with, how they fail. Wow. No, but that, like, that is the big glaring problem with every single one of these MMOs that's come out to try and be WoW killer, or just or just try and be an MMO. Period. Um, but you come into this problem with like how long you have to compete with WoW, and you know how many like DLCs they have for that game, and if you're gonna like want to come in, like how long do you have to be in development? How long can you fund development to create that content before you have to go out and say, all right, we have to release this now and hopefully we can get enough people to start working on this new content, you know? I, I just, I, I will just say it is interesting. It, somebody would ha- has to have, has to have a business pitch where they're like, look, let's, let's be, let's be a good business. Let's think about our product here, right? Let me pitch this to the board. Okay. That's already never going to happen. What, what, what is the, what is the problem with every single MMO, MMO that's come out? Okay. So we're making this new MMO. Why don't we try and release it without this problem that has caused every single other MMO to like fall apart? Whatever I, I don't know. I, it, it's just it's interesting. I mean, you could say never, but it's interesting when you look at um, freaking oh man, and I'm gonna forget all the names now. I mean, Star Wars uh, uh, Knights of the Old Republic. Na- yeah, Star Wars the Old Republic. Um, there's also Star oh Star. Ooh, what was that one? It was actually made by some World of Warcraft devs. Um, Oh man! Oh my gosh! I can't remember the name. Craft. Yeah, Craft. yeah, that's it. That's uh, the one. Oh, dang There's it, also Final that? Fantasy. That one. <laughs> well, Final oh, Fantasy. Well, Final Fantasy 14 is actually 14, good. Since they did their right, reboot. 14 came back from the dead. They actually completely failed yeah. at that at right. start. Which they did the ballsiest thing I've ever seen anyone do, which is they literally nuked their world. They killed ev- everyone's dead. So start whole new fresh. Wild star. Halfway through Sorry. the game. Wild, Wild Star, that game was garbage. Yeah. That game was... Bleak. Lacked content. Lacked content. And yeah. It I mean, just wasn't Lacked fun. a lot of it, it was just wasn't fun, like, in general. It, it, yeah, it lacked a lot of fun. Yeah. Like, um, it, it, it kind of, like, came out with this big pitch, like, oh, we're going to really focus on our, like, PvP aspect, and everybody's supposed to be equal level, and then you just like, what? What is this? What is this? noise. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Um, but okay. about... Hang on. About about the, the keeping up with World of Warcraft thing, I, I'm... Curious because I'm, I'm just going to guess and say that it's probably cheaper for World of Warcraft to craft new content because they're running on the same engine they've been running on, or a variant of the same engine they've been running on for the past 50 years. It, it, well, no, they, they remade it in Cata, in Cataclysm. But it's still it's still kind of, it's it's not a whole entirely new revamped engine or anything like that, so it's it's probably still, I'm going to assume relatively cheap to create new content to create new dungeons to create new raid bosses things like that whereas a game like destiny 2 is real expensive 
I'm going to say. And, I mean, Blizzard has the money to just... Making it for PC and console, yeah, for sure. Also makes it harder. They just, like, Blizzard just has, Bl- Blizzard just has yeah, money. Blizzard, Blizzard has Blizzard has money. Destiny. I don't know. Like, that it, it's, kind of, it's kind of a defeatist argument. Uh, Again, I, I, the way I see it in the business world, an MMO is the way for you to make the, mo- the highest possible earnings potential. It's an MMO you've gotta, that lots of people are playing, people, right? You well, can't you need an MMO that's on the phone. Warcraft. Huh? You need an MMO. The most, the most optimal would be MMO on the phone. Right. Well, when you look at, yeah. like, the, those yeah, are the two, the like, money makers. Like, you need somebody that, like, a, with, like, a subscription system. Something that, like, will, is constantly adding new content. This is going to be a point that I'm going to bring up here in a second. But then you have to think about all the people who, has a, who have a phone. And who have like you know an iPhone or like a um, a smartphone? That's the word. Uh, like everybody nowadays has a smart smartphone. So your audience is everybody. It's not specifically for a console. It's not specifically for the PC. Like they're not excluding everybody. They're trying to get something where everybody has it. Mm-hmm. And so you add those two things together, and it's supposed to be like the match made in heaven. Right. Right. Yeah, you would hope so. But and here's that's... here's a question that I have for you. I'm sorry. No, no, but it's yeah. for a new MMO to come out. Would the best, would one of the best options be bring it out with like as much content as they can and then try to update it weekly or just wait until they have enough content up to so people can spend as much time and then get something out in like the next three months or so? Yeah, I, I mean, I think, I think, and, and I will point this out that this is Blizzard's MO, right? Blizzard it has been notorious throughout their entire existence, for releasing a game late because it wasn't right. It wasn't ready yet. Um, uh, six months, a year late, if you're, if you're a smart business person, if you're, if you're a smart executive, if you're a smart leader, right, you can make that happen. How much, how much better would, uh, would Mass Effect 3 have been if EA didn't say, uh, no, it has to come out now and... And the development team was like, uh, the, the story's not ready and we need more time. And EA's like, no, it has to come out. And then they botched the ending. And and exact same thing, exact same problem with Andromeda. Um, forced timelines by the publishers who aren't developing the game because they're idiots. Um, just the, yeah. It, if you're interested in making money and, and yeah, and you, you can... It, do include the a mobile element and all that stuff, which Blizzard does with World of Warcraft and with Hearthstone being connected to World of Warcraft and being on the mobile and, and all that stuff. Um, if you want, if you actually want to make all that money and you think you can do it, it's worth it being in the game for long term and saying this. Okay, this game is gonna be delayed six months, delayed one year. You know, it's not like it's uncommon now, right? It's not like you're gonna be out of the ordinary if you're like, oh, this game's actually gonna be delayed a year. <laughs> like, oh, where have I heard that? It's completely common. Well, like the ultimate form of that is either Kingdom Hearts three oh. or Final Fantasy fifteen. <laughs> and I mean, Final Fantasy fifteen was a success, and it was delayed yes. for and uh, yeah, it was yeah, like could have been a lot better. Well, they had to remake it, and it was. It was, it was good. I thought it, wasn't it delayed because the guy that made Kingdom Hearts was the one making Final Fantasy fifteen? It was the other way around. I think it was the I think it was the yeah. other way around. Was Kingdom so. Hearts. Kingdom Hearts. Because they were like, we're got we got to get Kingdom we got to get Final Fantasy fifteen out. And then I was like, what about Kingdom Hearts? Right. Though? And <laughs> now that fifteen has been out, now they're actually Kingdom Hearts three is actually. It's Which well on its way. It's almost there, yeah. and uh, Ron will not stop talking about it. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I want it. I want it now. No, I but anyway. To. I, 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 so, yeah, I guess that was kind of a little long-winded, but I would certainly say, to me, uh, it it not only makes game sense, to me, it makes business sense. And I would I would happily, like, okay, give me a couple days. I'll put together a little uh, little uh, slideshow, you know, I'll dress up suit and tie, put me in front of the board. I will, I will go in there and give my pitch on why it will be a better long-term investment to delay a game a year and make sure that it has enough content to last the most hardcore gamer three months until they launch. Need, until like so they've played through the base stuff like just the base stuff alone yeah not like the extra like so for i don't know for the warcraft at all i played that one vanilla with you and we got like i think three hours into it oh yeah yeah vanilla wow the my private server <laughs> yeah that was a lot of fun yeah. 
and like so you wait like you'd want them to beat like that stuff first in like the first three months and then have them want to like uh, go through no it, stuff. it it doesn't matter to me what the content is that's the thing it's like it can be but if it's the brand new stuff right away like and then you have to go back and play like the old stuff you know like you've like seen all this new things that i don't know wait i'm say? confused i know i'm confused i think i'm confusing myself too okay. sorry okay so like you have your base game right and yeah. let's say the new content is something like advanced or past the story right don't you feel like they should work up that way to get to that new stuff or should that just be for them no matter what like if we're thinking let me let me a fallout three okay right this this might be a bit the best way for me to sure, describe sure. this so fallout three you have the base story which is trying to find your father right but you have this other dlc like the alien or steel or the steel factory whatever it's called like all this other stuff mm -hmm. would you want them to be able to play through the main story first and then go to these other areas that have like nothing to do with the story or would you uh -huh. want them to like like would that oh that okay so it's a slightly different question yeah, yeah yeah you know and so that that's kind of what i'm saying is like i it's it's not a big deal to me where the content is right if you want to spread it out or you if you want to put it in a line right if you you, you have mm -hmm. to progress through stuff to get to all the content or if you just want to spread it out with all the options and people can go and focus on yeah, this Yeah, I'm sorry. That's what I was then, trying to say. And then go back. Yeah. It, it's not a big deal to me because I think either way can work, right? You can have – and that was the thing about Vanilla WoW that people sometimes forget. And I'll, I've talked about this on the podcast before. And I'll talk about this right now about Destiny 2. Vanilla WoW, it took uh, – I, I, I think it was Soda Poppin who actually said this, who was talking about Vanilla WoW and how it took him – Every playing every single day, right? Six to 12 hours a day playing World of Warcraft a month to get to the level 60, right? That means Ooh. that means the more casual dude who's playing the game like 10 hours a week or whatever, right? is going to take several months to get to max level. And the thing about original World of Warcraft, you, you had the full experience the whole time, right? You didn't have to get to end game to be able to experience good raids. You had Wailing Caverns, you had Dire Maul. Well, that was a pat that was passionate a little bit later, but. You had dungeons. Dire Maul was like level like 40-ish, you know, 45 or something. You would get into Dire Maul. And you're basically doing these raids, but you're not max level, right? Like, that's that's content that you're experiencing that it's taking a while. And Destiny 2, of course, was like... I remember playing Destiny 2 when it first came out. And, and like, actually, like, getting done with a play session, just being like... I played... I streamed this game for six hours a day, right? I've never... Like first time I started the game, and I'm level I'm level ten, or like I was level eight. It's like I'm lo like what? It, it, like yeah, there's only that's, twenty that's, levels, anyways. You know, it's like it, like yeah. what an easy way to make the game, give it a little bit of longevity is to like triple the time it takes to gain levels. So people are who are working for something. Um, it was so ridiculously easy. So that's that's one way. I'm I'm a devil's advocate that a little bit, and actually kind of not devil's advocate a little bit. But the you're, you're going to share real levels don't. Opinion. Yeah. Yeah. So my my thought is that the the levels are like that because one, it's a video game, and when you level up, it's a huge explosion. You're super excited, so they want that to happen as much as possible because it makes you happy. Two, the levels don't matter, right? Like you could be level twenty max level with crap gear and you're not going to be able to do yeah. anything whereas if you have better gear it's better and three they kind of stole the the whole leveling up mechanic from overwatch where af every level past level 20 where you fill up your xp bar you get a loot box you're right that's that's filled with goodies so that's kind of fine yeah. they're yeah. they're going more overwatch than no, and i i remember that happening in world of warcraft actually the uh once you hit max level, I remember the first, like, you know, leveling up and, and then getting to 70 was um, my first max level character. I didn't, I didn't get to 60 in vanilla. I got to 70 in Burning Crusade. And I remember, you know, finding out that, like, once you get to max level, you can still do quests. But instead of experience, you just get gold for the experience. I was like, oh, my gosh, this sounds so good because but I'm so you poor. Ha like, you, have to, you have to think about, like, the, the person, like, the, like, we were talking about, the person who can't play as much. Like, the person that can't, like, I mean, you're saying that your first your first stream was like six, uh, six, seven hours, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, and you're level eight for somebody who's like just getting off of work 
it has to go to bed at 10 and it's like 8 o'clock and they can just put in a couple of hours. They want to feel like they can either catch up with their friends or just like right. be at that place without having to like pay the extra money. Because like now for WoW, you can buy a level 100 character yeah, right off the bat. So you can go and do all this extra fun stuff. Right. That, but that's like, a little different. I don't mind that because then you still have to level through the new content, right? Which is But like I think that's what but. Destiny was aimed for. When you think... I understand that Destiny 2 was published alongside of Blizzard, but it's aimed to to be... Yeah, yeah, sorry, you're right. Um, It's aimed to be for that more... Kind of, like, more casual-ish. So I I respect that, and I understand that, but I have absolutely no no sympathy for the argument of, like, oh, you should be able to level up faster just because there are people that don't have a lot of time to play the game. Again, you can play PvP once you're, like, level three or whatever in destiny two right you can get into pvp missions like you pretty early on like you get access to um, wait do you, I, i'm pretty sure to a strike you can do a strike in the early levels just like you just get gear i think there's i think there's an early yeah, strike yeah. you can get gear according according to your stuff and that's the same thing with world of Warcraft. like i was talking about you can play wailing caverns and wailing caverns was, you know took like 45 minutes to an hour it felt like you were doing a raid Right? Yeah, maybe you aren't doing on Carrage that needed 40 people all max level with, like, the best gear in the game. Maybe, yeah. But but I I have absolutely no sympathy, like, for that argument. You you don't get to experience that content. That's okay. That Maybe that content isn't for you. But there's tons of other stuff you can do. There's tons of other stuff. And, and Destiny 2 has it as well as World of Warcraft, where, I guess to me, it's it's a reflection on poor game design. If, if the leveling process and, and like the people who don't spend as much time in the game, if they are inherently unable to have as much fun as people at max level, right? That's a, that's a game design problem. That means your game sucks. If people can't have fun in all aspects of the game at the end of the game or while they're leveling up and just spending a few hours in it. So that's, I mean, yeah, I understand. Yeah. Chemically you gain a level, you feel really good, you, you know, happy, whatever, but that, that that's not an excuse to just make progression a snap. Ah, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna argue that. Okay. I'm a heavy right? side Cause, already. Because because I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say from the perspective of somebody that loves video games and used to work crazy hours, and never had time for video games. I appreciate when a game would let me say, "Hey, we know you're not gonna get to level 60." Just buy a level 60 character slot. You'll get some skills. We'll teach you how to play. You'll have fun with your friends. Which game? I'm fu- Just any game. Any game that does. They're, they're, Destiny 1 did that. I don't know if Destiny 2 is doing that just yet, but they would let you basically buy a new, buy a level, a max level character, and it would give you some skills, and then you level up the rest okay. of your skills. But I'm, I'm fine with that because I, I view time as money. Yeah. And money is time. So <laughs> if I don't have. The 30 to 40 to 50, 100 hours to put into the game to get that thing, but I still want to get that thing, I can give you my money in replacing it. Okay, I, 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 take my money, Dan. I do want to jump in here and say, like, not, yeah, careful, because in a way that argument kind of straw dogs me a little bit. Um, straw, straw dogs? Straw mans. Strong, straw mans, my argument, essentially. Okay, I was about to um, Google what straw, yeah, straw dog dogs was. Wait a second. Um, because. I, I'm all for that, too, because the thing is, nowadays, World of Warcraft, people are spending money not on original War, World of Warcraft. You, you, you Right now, you go to the store and you spend, oh, God, it probably is still $60. Isn't it free? Is no, it, for Legion. Isn't the base you spend, free? Yeah, yeah, well, it's free to play up to level 20. And that's the thing, right? You're getting your money's worth out of that 1 through 20 experience. But if you pay $60 for Legion, then, yes, I'm totally okay with you getting that free level 100, so that you level through the content that you just paid for, right? You're not paying to skip the to skip the content, the new content that everybody's just getting into from the start, right? It's all like to me, mm-hmm. my argument applies if if every new WoW expansion is like a completely brand new game, a new game where you are required to level up through all the content, and all your characters have to level up, and you do kind of have to, in a way, you basically do start over all the gear in the new expansion is going to be better than, you know, the... That's the thing, right? Once you hit, like... Well, if they add, like, a new race or something like that, then that makes sense. Right. But, it, yeah, even the new races will, like, you know, you can... You you level through the starting stuff, and then they'll they'll bump you up to max level, right? Like, they don't have... Um, 
Well, though I think Pandaria, they did actually. You still had to level through all the other content, but at that po- at that point, they had instituted experience gains that sped up all that stuff, right? But mo- mostly, my argument applies to like vanilla World of Warcraft in the vacuum okay. of its time, okay. right? in context, right? Not right. now. So I don't. Vanilla. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't demand people like, no, you have to level through on vanilla servers, you know, and, and no experience gains, you know, or or um, like <laughs> you have to suffer like the rest like, of us. Right? No, I'm, I'm not advocating for that. That, that is not what I'm saying. I, I'm not. Gonna, I'm not going to fight that, but I, I think I want to amend my statement okay. a little bit because I don't. I don't think you should get the max level character because in Mm -hmm. in in situations where like brand new content just drops and the level cap goes to 120 whatever i don't want a whole bunch like if i play the game a whole bunch and i worked to get there i don't want to see a bunch of people that don't know what they're certainly right in this in this end game stuff i think i think it would be it's it's not a bad idea to have that like eight level 80 drop or something like that so that way they they get the game they get to play with it for a little while and then they just level up the rest of the way yeah, yeah, but I because there's nothing there's nothing more frustrating than someone's like I don't know what my skills right, are. Yeah, well, exactly. I haven't shut up my that's the thing is like you wouldn't advocate for Destiny Two dropping on launch and you could pay an extra forty dollars to just have your character be at max level on launch day, right? That's like, uh, that's a bit different because the level doesn't matter. So, like, if they had said, we're going to put you to the max light level, the max strength that you can... I'd well, like, it, it does matter. It, it matters but, for what content but, you can access. You can't access some content until you hit max level to finish the story, at least. It's also face-rollingly easy to play Destiny. Right, but it, it still takes some you time, right? It's, it still takes you eight, ten hours I would say it takes far more time to play, like, to learn how to get good at, at your World of Warcraft tune. For than sure. It is to sh- shoot the bad guy in the head. You know, I am. That's just me. I'm fully on Hebe's side because even like playing for three hours, and like I'm like, okay, I'm starting to like, get the hang of this. All of a sudden, I get introduced to something completely new that I'm like, I can't mix shoot this guy's face. Like I have to learn something completely different. Like I don't know. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we've uh, we've talked about Bungie oh, and MMOs quite <laughs> enough. Yep. And uh, Cruz needs to go. So real quick. Real quick, what are you guys going to be playing? Cruz, let's start with you. What are you playing, and what are you yeah. uh, this week? Yes, up. Um, <clears throat> probably more uh, Rainbow Six and Overwatch. Uh, after talking about WoW, I actually kind of want to get a membership hey. and play it a bit. <laughs> but Just wait, that might, that wait might be coming Azeroth. up for me. Wait for Azeroth. That might be coming up for me. Uh, I don't know. Well, we'll see where that goes. And if I get this job that I have my interview for, that might hey. actually be a thing, and I could actually get my graphics card and start streaming. There you go. Good luck. Good luck. Hebe, what are you streaming this week? Good luck. Okay. Well, as usual, it's Monday. I'm going to stream some more of that D and D tonight, and then uh, tomorrow probably right back into into releasing tension and, and stress with Stardew Valley. I've been getting I've been getting some good viewership go. on that. It's been That's all right. That's good to hear. I'll be playing a lot more Total War Warhammer Two, and. Uh, as well as some Darkest Dungeon coming up on Friday. And then really quick, twitch.tv slash realbiasedgaming, twitter.com slash realbias, and youtube.com slash realbiasedgaming. Cruz, where can we find you? Uh, I see Cruzy on Steam. Um, I see Cruzy on, or the average I see on uh, Twitter. And uh, crab underscore with an ice on Uplay. <laughs> <laughs> and Hebe, where can we find you? Twitch.tv slash heebiejeebies and Twitter... Right. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining uh, joining me today, gentlemen. Uh, it was good to have our very first live streamed podcast. I'm uh, hoping to make this the norm going into the future. Yeah, that was that was excellent. Smart. Looking forward Smart. to more. So yeah, thanks for being here, my dudes. Uh, thanks for being here, chat. Uh, we I was reading your comments, uh, even though I didn't uh, respond to to them. I all. saw you, Jaeger. <laughs> yeah, they <laughs> they're hanging out. They're lurking. Uh, it was good to see you out there. Uh, and make sure when this this podcast will be going up very soon on YouTube, feel free to drop your real bias opinions there as well in the comments section. Thanks for joining us on the Real Bias Podcast number nine. We will see you next week. Have a good one.